a new episode of the Lex Friedman podcast gives us a rare in-depth conversation in long form with one of the greatest minds in AI today. So in it, Friedman conducts a two and a half hour interview with Google DeepMind CEO and co-founder Demis Hassabis. In it, Hassabis covers a huge amount of ground. He talks about everything from Google's latest models to AI's impact on scientific research to the race towards AGI. And on that last note, Saba says he believes AGI could arrive by 2030 with a 50-50 chance of it happening in the next five years. And he has a really high bar for what his definition of AGI is. He sees it as AI that isn't just brilliant at narrow tasks, which is what plenty of people would define as AGI, but consistently brilliant across the full range of human cognitive work, from reasoning to planning to creativity. He also believes AI will surprise us, like DeepMind's AlphaGo AI system once did with its famous Move 37. He imagines tests where an AI could invent a new scientific conjecture, the way Einstein, for instance, proposed relativity, or even design an entirely new game as elegant as the game of Go itself. He does, however, still stress uncertainty. Today's models are scaling impressively, but it is unclear whether more compute alone is going to get us to this next frontier or whether entirely new breakthroughs are needed. So, Paul, there's a lot going on in this episode, and I just wanted to maybe turn it over to you and ask what jumps out here as most noteworthy because Demis is definitely someone we have to pay attention to. Yeah, so the um, the one thing that, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to, I don't know, almost every interview Demis has ever given. Like, I, I've been following Demis since 2011. Um, and the thing that, you know, really started sticking out to me this past week, I listened to two different podcasts he did uh, this past week. And it's the juxtaposition of listening to him speak about AI in the future versus all the other AI lab leaders. It, it's somewhat jarring, actually, um, how stark the contrast is between how he talks about the future and why they're building what they're building and then the approach that the other people are taking. So, you know, I mentioned this recently. We basically have five people that are kind of fig figuring all this out and, and leading <laughs> um, the future of AI. You have Dario Amade uh, at Anthropic, came from OpenAI. Um, physicist turned AI safety researcher and entrepreneur. You have Sam Altman, you know, capitalist through and through, entrepreneur, investor, co-founded OpenAI with Elon Musk as a counterbalance to the perception that Google couldn't be trusted to shepherd AGI into the world. Um, you have Elon Musk, richest person in the world, entrepreneur, obviously one of the great minds, inventors, entrepreneurs of our generation, but it's also unclear, like, his motives, uh, especially with XAI. Um and like why he's pursuing AGI and beyond, it's it's um, it does seem contrary to his original goals, where he wanted to you know build it and safely shepherd it into the world. And um, you know, I think right now he and Zuckerberg are the most willing to push the boundaries of what most people would consider safe and ethical when it comes to AI and society. Uh, then you have Zuckerberg, the third richest person in the world, uh, made all his money selling ads on top of social networks. And so, you know, his motivations, while they may be beyond this, is largely been to generate money by engaging people and keeping them on his platforms. And then you have Demis, who is a Nobel Prize winning um, scientist who built DeepMind to solve intelligence and then solve everything else. Like since he was age like 13 as a child chess prodigy, he's been pursuing the biggest mysteries of the universe. Like where did it all come from? Why? Why does gravity work? Like, how do we solve illnesses? Like, that's where he comes from. And so, you know, he won the Nobel Prize last year for AlphaFold, which is an AI system developed by DeepMind that uh, revolutionized protein structure prediction. Um, but I also think that he's not done. Like I, I've said on stage for the last 10 years, you know, I've, I've used his definition of AI since probably 2017, 2018, when I was doing public speaking on AI. Um, and I always said, like, I think he'll win multiple Nobel Prizes. I think he'll end up being one of, if not the most significant person of our generation for the work he was doing. Um, his definition of AI, by the way, that I reference is the science of making machines smart. It's just this idea that we can have machines that can think, create, understand, reason. That, that was never a given. Like up until 2022, when 
all of us experienced Gen AI, most people didn't agree with that. Like we didn't know that that was actually going to happen. So I think when I listen to Demis, it gives me hope for humanity. Like I feel like his intentions are actually pure and science-based and this idea of solving intelligence to get to the, all the other stuff, I find that inspiring. Um, and so the one thing that was like sticking out to me as I was listening to him with this Lex Freeman interview is it's almost like if you could go back and listen to like von Neumann or Jobs mm -hmm. or Einstein or Tesla, like if you could actually hear their dreams and aspirations and visions and inner thoughts in real time as they were reinventing the future, that's kind of how it feels when you listen to him. So when you listen to the other people, it just, it feels like they're just building AI and they're going to figure out what it means and they're going to make a bunch of money and then they'll figure out how to redistribute it. And it just feels economics driven where like Demis just feels purely research driven. Um, the other thing I was thinking about actually this morning as I was like kind of going through the notes, getting ready for this is what the value of Demis and DeepMind is. So I've said this before, like if Demis ever left Google, I would sell all my stock in Google. Like I just, I feel like he, he is the thing that's the future of the company. But I started to kind of put it into context. So Google paid $650 million for DeepMind in 2014. If OpenAI today is rumored to be worth $500 billion, that's the, the latest number, right, Mike, that we heard with their yeah. latest round. They're doing $500 billion. Um, DeepMind as a standalone lab, like if, if Demis left tomorrow and just like, you know, did his own thing or like DeepMind just spun out as a standalone entity, that company's easily probably worth a half a trillion to a trillion dollars. Like XAI is worth 200 billion, Anthropics 170 billion, Safe Superintelligence 32 billion, Thinking Machines Labs, which isn't even a year old, 12 billion. You take DeepMind out of Google, like what is that company worth on its own? And so then I started realizing like there is just no way Wall Street has fully factored in the value and impact of DeepMind into Alphabet's stock price. Because if... <clears throat> If Demis left tomorrow, Google's stock would crash. Like the, like the, the future, the value of the company is dependent upon DeepMind. So I don't know all that context. I I would really advise people like if you if you haven't listened to Demis speak before, uh, I would I would give yourself the grace of two hours and twenty five minutes and listen to the whole thing. Now the interview gets a little technical, like especially in the early going. Um, it definitely a little technical, but I would ride that out like. I, I would sort of see that through because the technical parts helps you realize how Demis sees the world, which is if it has a structure, like if it has an evolutionary structure, whatever that is, he believes that you can model it and you can solve for it. And so anything in nature that, that has a structure, they look at like proteins that we can figure out how to do it with AI. And so it, it really becomes fascinating. He talks about like VO3, their, their video generation model and how surprised he was that it sort of learned physics, it seems, through observation. Like prior to that, they thought you had to like embody intelligence like in a robot and it had to like be out in the world and experiencing the world to learn physics and nature. And yet they somehow just trained it on a bunch of YouTube videos and it seems to be able to recreate the physics of the universe. And that was surprising to them. He talks about like the origins of life and his pursuit of AI and AGI and why he's doing it to try and understand all of these big things. And then he gets into like the path to AGI, Mike, like you had talked about, um, and just kind of how he sees that playing out. He gets into like the scaling laws and, and kind of how they don't really see a breakdown in them. Like they may be slowing down in one aspect, but they're speeding up in the others. Talks about the race to AGI, competition for AI talent, um, humanity, consciousness. Like it's, it's just a very far ranging thing, but truly like one of the great minds probably in human history. And you get to listen to it for two hours and 25 minutes. Like it's, it's crazy that we're actually at a point in society where it's free to listen to someone like that speak for two hours. So I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I'm obviously like a, a huge fan of his, but I just think that if you care deeply about where all this is going, it's really important to understand the motivations of the people driving it. And like I said, in this episode, there's like five major people right now that are driving that. And I think that listening to Demis will give you hope. Um, it's, it's a lot to process, but I, I do think that, you know, you can see 
why there's some optimism of a future of abundance if the world Demis envisions becomes possible. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a... Uh, Every time I listen to his stuff, I just have to like kind of step back and like think bigger picture, I guess. Yeah, and I don't know about you if you uh, would agree with this, but despite him painting this very radical picture of possible abundance, I don't know if I've ever heard anyone with less hype in this space than Demis provides when he talks. Yeah, totally. And, and you know, he he's a researcher. Like the reason he sold to Google. And he said this, like he had, he could have taken more money from Zuckerberg. Like they could have sold DeepMind for more money. Um, was because he thought that the resources Google offered would accelerate his path to solving intelligence. He didn't do it to like productize AI like that. He actually probably got dragged into having to do that when Chad GPT showed up and they had to combine Google brain and Google DeepMind. And then he became the CEO of, of DeepMind, which became the solo lab within Google he's not a product guy. Like yeah. it ends up, he's actually a really good product guy, but not by choice or by design. Um, he ended up seeing, it sounds like the value of having Google's massive distribution into their seven products and platforms with a billion plus users each, where you could actually test these things. And he realized, okay, having access to all these people through these products enables us to advance our learnings faster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, um, uh, infinitely fascinating person and um like i said it's such such a and not to not to diminish what the other people are doing but it, it's just very different like it's a uh, very different motivations and um yeah and he does a great job of explaining things in simple terms other than, other than the first like 20 minutes i mean you gotta <laughs> you gotta hit pause a few times and maybe google a couple things as you're going to like understand uh, some of the stuff they're talking about, but because Lex tends to ask some pretty advanced questions and, you know, it's kind of tricky to follow along a little bit. But like I said, if if you're not that intrigued by the stuff they're talking about early on, just kind of like ride through it and you'll come out the other side and it'll be worth it. Uh, but it, some of the stuff they talk about is actually fascinating to pause and go search a little bit and understand what they're talking about because it it changes your perspective on things actually once you understand it.